Hello and welcome, my name is Clive from clivesart.co.uk and in today's lesson we're going to be painting a misty forest scene. Now I've already painted this and I'm going to recreate it so I hope I can do it justice. I hope I can do myself justice but if that's something you're interested in is painting a misty forest scene then please stay with me and after my short introduction you can join me in the studio. Nice. <laughs> Hey, welcome, thanks for stopping by. It's time to learn with our friend Clive. So grab your brush, have a great time. And don't forget to click subscribe. Visit Clive5R.co.uk. Hello, and thank you for taking up my invitation to join me in the studio. I hope you like the new theme music, yes, and um, all the information on that is below in the secret place. Don't tell everybody. Okay, so I have decided to do a 20 centimeter by 20 centimeter canvas because this is um, an easier site of canvas for me to show you a technique. Now, you can take this particular painting to any size you want. Now, I want to show you how to find color in black paint. Yes, how can you paint something in a monochromic way but bring colour to it? Now, that's interesting, isn't it? So let's go and have a look at the palette. And as you can see in front of me, um, my palette is set out like this today. Uh, hello, <laughs> I forgot what camera I was on. So we got Prussian blue. Yes, that's all. That's all we've got is Prussian blue, Ceylon blue, and a little bit of Hooker's green. Yes, okay, now i got Mars Black and I've got some Titanium White. I've got a little bit of gesso over there, but um, I don't know if I'll use that or not. And I've decided I'm going to show you the type of brushes I'm going to be using today. Um, I'm just going to use a standard half inch um, angled flat or small shader. I'm going to use a um, rigger brush or half rigger brush. That's the one with a long thin point look that we can do blades of grass with. And I might use this little tiny filbert. This is a number six. Um, I might pick up an odd brush here and there and there and here. Um, I haven't quite decided exactly what I'm doing. Please ignore the colours that you see there because they are for a commission that I'm working on currently. I'm also going to introduce a couple of little bits of... Um, what do they call it? What do they call that? Sponge. Yes, sponge. Now, the best thing is natural sponge. Now, if you can get out... If you go into an artist shop, like, uh, I don't know... Um, uh, 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 the range or uh, you can go into um, hobby craft or hobby lobby or anywhere like that and, um, and I'm sure there's, there's what they, what's that company out in America called Michaels yeah so anyway anything like that but I suggest you get a natural sponge don't get just an ordinary sponge because a natural sponge has got more holes and crevices and things in that and there's a little secret about using sponges with acrylics which I'll show you in just a minute and you've got to follow those rules, otherwise they'll just get ruined and you'll have to chuck them in the bin and they're quite expensive. And we don't like wasting money, do we? No. So look after your equipment, wash them regularly. Every time you finish uh, a session of painting, make sure you wash everything out with warm water, especially with acrylics, because acrylics don't like warm water. No, it breaks down the molecular bonds with a little bit of soap and everybody's happy, yes, and the brushes, and you put them in there, and you can hear them cheering as you're walking out the studio. Hooray, I'm clean. <laughs> okay, without further ado, let's have a look at the actual canvas we're gonna be working on today. And as you can see, I've got a 20 centimeter by 20 centimeter canvas, which I have pre So This is an old canvas that I've used in uh, a previous lessons. It was one of the seven day challenges. Um, so I had to re-gesso it because I don't like, I don't like waste and, uh, I, I just just all over it anyway. Anyway, save myself some money. Yes. Now, as you know, I stick these canvases to my board with a little bit of blue tack, and that's just for filming purposes. So don't worry about that. You paint on them any way you want. Put them on easel any way you want. Okay. So, misty forest, which is what I'm thinking of, and it's going to be primarily black and white to start with, and then I'm going to show you how to bring colour from the dark. Yes. How to bring it out, how, how, to, how to make that look so illuminating. That's the plan I'm doing, yes. Woof, let's see if we can do it. Right, the first thing I'm gonna do is take my hat off because it's a bit warm in here tonight. There we go. And let's get on to the painting. 
Okay, so what I decided to do, I'm going to introduce another brush. This is just a big uh, one inch short flat. I'll tell you why I'm going to do that in a minute because I wanted to, I just thinking about the painting. Um, I'm bringing in my um, Mr. Bottle. That's a little fine mist, ultra mist Mr. Bottle. And I'm just going to spray that canvas down. I want to dampen down the surface like that and um, brush that in. let that soak in a little bit I'm gonna get my bot my little uh, container I'm gonna put some of my flow improver medium mix in there and all these things that I'm using you the mr. bottle and flow improvers can be found on my website if you want to pop along and um, have a look if there's anything there you want I'd be appreciated and because that's what helps um, support me in the studio okay now what I want to do now is I'm gonna put a, a bit of a gray background I think so I'm gonna just bring a little bit of that gesso across like that. I'm going to use gesso because I, I want to keep the tooth of the paint um, there. So I'm going to use this as a bit of a ground to be quite honest with you. And just a touch, just a touch of black. Now, not a lot of black, there's not a lot of black there on my brush look. So I'm just going to, and you can see how strong that black is. So bring a little bit more gesso into that. There you go nice so we don't want it a strong gray what i'm looking for is more of um, a nice tint rather than anything else okay now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to put that over like that now you might not see a lot of difference there currently but there is a little bit of difference there trust me it is slightly gray don't know if the cameras are actually picking that up I'm just checking <laughs> no but there is a there is a difference there and um, I'm just gonna go all over the canvas with that it's just, this is as I said this is going to be more of a ground and it was raining all day here yesterday and um, it was a horrible day in Wales but the Sun is out today and um, this is actually, um, I'm actually painting it up past 11 in the morning, yes, I'm going to give it another squirt with some paint, uh, with my mister bottle, that's the fine art, house five art fine mist bottle, I'm going to bring a little bit of gesso back into that, I'm going to make this grey just a little bit darker, just to get another little touch of black there on the edge of my brush, I'm just going to mix that in like that, just a little bit darker, looking at my grayscale stick which I've got on the side, and then just move the camera a bit and there you go you could just about see it <laughs> and um, I'm just going to put a little bit of oh, that darker mix around about that area there I'm just going to blend that through now I'm just been a little bit more black again just a little touch just increase that grey darken it up darken it up and then bring that there like that so there's definitely a marked difference now a little bit more black and this is going to be the forest floor it is now this works better actually on a larger canvas so if you've got a bit of a larger canvas then it would work actually better for you um, I need a blending brush so um, okay so I'm just going to use this um, shader this oval shader and I'm just going to very lightly just merge those colors together like that I've had trouble with this brush before, it's, it, the hairs keep coming out and I don't know why so I'm going to have to sort that out I think. So you get these little tiny bits but this is a natural natural brush so you're going to get that anyway. But that's okay, that's okay. We just get that merged and blended. and So we don't want any hard lines really. What we're doing is looking for a nice transition between the different shades of grey. And what I'm going to do is just going to spray my brush because I don't want to wet it but I don't want it to dry on me um, I'm just looking at my painting 
and I, I think I put a little bit of dark of grey there like that yes I think that's all I did I'm trying to recreate a painting you've already created once is uh, it's quite easy you know uh, in one way but when you do you do tend to forget what you've done sometimes oh, well I do anyway so that's why I like the planning stage of, of all this type of stuff anyway there we go now let's just blend that in what I did then I just took the the moisture off the back off of my brush onto the back of my hand because I didn't want it to run too much and if it started to dry a little bit like that just get a little bit of moisture on your brush and just work that paint back in now any underlining color and the color you just put on the, the layer you just put on a drying and you do this what you're going to do is going to pick the paint up off the canvas so you can, I don't know if you can actually see that it's happening there but that's okay in normal circumstances I don't like that to happen but in this particular instance I don't mind that happening because it looks as if there's little tiny sparkles of light which is what I'm looking for now I think looking at my reference um, which I did earlier that's just about right so what I need to do now is actually dry that off with a hairdryer and um, I'll just zoom in a bit closer for you to look at that so you see I got a, I got a definite um, dark area there and it's fading right back into the light there now this is the light but where can we get color and light and vibrance from a from a black and white painting well we will see as the painting progresses to show you exactly how that happens now i'm going to dry that off with a hairdryer well it's first i switch it on <laughs> oh i never switch it on Okay, so that's good. I'm just wiping my brushes, just making sure that I'm cleaning my brushes as I go along. And as I said, don't stand them up in the rack when they wet because the, the water can actually fall back through the ferrule, which is that part there. And um, I don't know if you've seen that, which is that part by there, and it'll loosen the glue. So I always wash my brushes and I lay them down then. Lay them down to sleep. I certainly do. Now I want to pick up my detail. This is my rigger brush, half rigger brush, or um, script liner brush, whatever you want to call it. That's fine. I'm picking up a bit of moisture. Now I'm going to get some titanium white in this case. I'm going to mix that with that. <coughs> get it to a nice sharp point, and I'm just going to put a little line. Like that now is that too light it is now I want something a little bit darker than that so I'm going to bring a bit of my Prussian blue into my gray because I want a little bit of a, a, a blue tinge to it there you go so I'm making it more of a Payne's gray rather than a black then okay so a little bit of blue mostly black but that's going to give you a nice Payne's green and let's try don't worry about that line there, but that's fine. Just put another little line there, which we could do. Okay, so let's just carry on putting some lines in. Any which way you want. Doesn't really matter. Just mix a little bit more white with that. But I definitely do want them a little bit lighter. continue to do that what you could do you could get your shading brush and just rub the bottoms of these a little bit like that just to smooth them out a bit got a bit of green on my brush so I um, couldn't clean that very well could I no let me telling you about cleaning brushes and I, I didn't clean mine very well Leave that darker mix make a slightly bigger line there like that taking that up to the top there you go and i have got a bit of a trouble with um the paint drying so a bit more white into this side thin than that down and i want a nice light because the lightness is the distance 
it's the light of the the light of the the trees I'm putting in here looks like they're further away and just put lines in like that this is a forestry don't forget and what I'm trying to do here is give that illusion that there is trees and branches and stuff going on and then just a couple of little loose lines like this and you can hear my cat and my dog playing outside again and a bit more black that's all you're looking for that's all you're looking for is something like that right okay so we wash that brush out now and let's go in to our angle shader bring in some white now back into that mix just a touch of blue just a touch of that fresh and blue. Now, if you want to know where what my colours are, if you've forgotten, if you have a look at the side of my palette there, you will see them written down in their little boxes. So they, they're always going to be there, or they're going to be in the secret place in the description in the descriptions. I'll just bring a touch of black to that now. I want to darken this up a little bit more now. It's a nice blue, blue grey. And I'm just gonna go. Make a nice thick line like that. Smooth that off. Like Again, let's put another one just behind him. So if I if I do this. Then bring that down like that. I'll bring that there. They look as if they're slightly behind him. And let's put another one, nice thick one there. Like that. And these are like pine trees. So the the pine trees in the forestry where which is not too far from where I live. I've noticed that they, some of them are a little bit straight and some of them are a little bit wonky. And then just a thinner line then, like that. And just give it a little wiggle. You don't want that line too straight, but you don't want it. There you go, like that. A bit more black to that mix now. And let's put one right on the edge right on the edge like that a little bit of moisture because the paint is drying out because it is quite warm and that just fades into the blackness there like that you could push up like that if you wanted to just put like these little bits of bracken and stuff we'll go into that in a little bit more detail in just a second I'm going into pure black now, just on the edge there like that. In fact, let's let's put that pure black. Let's just change that tree a minute. Maybe that's better. And let's put another one there, but leave a little gap, and then disappear, and then leave another little gap, like as if there's light coming through. These trees are so close together. They've been living together for years and they've been growing in this forestry and they've become really good friends and all the little squirrels and birds and been making nests and living in these trees and um, let's bring a little bit of blue into that mix now just a touch of white and this is good for learning how values and things work and then we can put a marked difference now next to that black so as you see there is definitely a difference between one tree and another but you can't see the diff you can't see them separated you know it's there you know that's not just one tree you know there's a couple of trees but you cannot see any gap between them which is 
what I want to try and accomplish and then dark again darker mix again this is a an old tree this one this is the daddy tree just leave a little tiny gap there like that there there you go that's good just spread that around here and there don't cover it all in black just a little bit like that now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my bit of sponge and I'm going to pick up and what you should do actually is soak your sponge really well in water I meant to say that didn't I there's a little trick for you you need to soak that sponge I just put that in the pail of water now and soaked it okay so you need to pre-soak the sponge otherwise it's not going to work for you and then when you finish with the brush uh, the, the sponge um, it's important that you wash it really well or it's going to go hard now I'm picking up all these different types of blues and whites and blacks and greys now all on there and I'm just going to go very lightly very lightly in and you've seen me do this in a, in a few ways before just going to put a little tiny bushes and things and hedgerows or whatever they call I want to call them in there and a little bit of darker colour now and now you've seen me doing this before going over that don't worry too much about that and then a bit, 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 bit more in there a little bit darker in there let's put that now we've put it darker in front of those trees it's going to look as like as if it's in front of them there you go nice easy way of putting some bits of things here there and everywhere okay now I'm going to put that straight in the water and leave that soak I'm going to get my half inch shader angled and go back into this mix put a bit more black a little bit more blue with it a little bit of white and now like I just did there with the bracken I'm just gonna put some little lines like that like as if there's bracken and stuff growing push up back into my half inch rigger now I'm just gonna put some branches in and don't forget what I said little Y's and V's some branches grow up some branches grow out some branches fall down with the weight of the trees a little squirrel has most probably run up there and bent the branch look and it's dropped and just put these let's get some black there now and let's look at these because normally they got little things growing out of them like that there's not going to be big branches coming out of these trees here they're just going to be like little bits of stuff coming out we could have one coming across maybe nice branch coming like that to get this the run and flow so a little bit of water or a bit of medium mix as I use little Y's and V's don't worry if you've got a little couple of little breaks in between now let's bring a couple of these little things here like that a couple of twigs No, I said, don't worry too much if the, the, the lines are broken. They're not all going to be like straight lines like that. There's another branch coming in there now. 
I wasn't expected, but he's there. He lives there now. He, that's where he's been. That's where he's been growing, and that's what develops sometimes when we do things like this. And um, don't worry, because you can't make mistakes. You just develop. Your painting just develops. You can't make a mistake. Not really. A little bit of lighter colour there, like that. Because if it's just catching the lighter touch, and we could put a little bit of. Like just on that branch there like that maybe I don't know you know this is your world and um, you, you need to you need to build this up I'm gonna go another bit of sponge now I'm just gonna wet that bit of sponge and again I'm gonna go into that mix I made by there I'm just tapping the sponge on that and I'm just gonna go like that like as if there's a couple of little leaves and things a bit more up the top like that like as if there's a canopy there type of stuff okay and I'm gonna wash that out I'm rinsing that out really well squeezing it between my fingertips okay so I'm gonna pick up a touch of white with that I'm just gonna I want to whiten this gray up now Take a little bit off, that's the key, take a little bit off, don't put it all in thick, take a little bit off and then just go in the background, not you, there, you and there, you and there, just a nice light, light touch, not too much, not too much. Okay, we check our back in the bowl, I'm going to pick up my little... Um, filbert brush now I'm going to pick up some pure white with this what I'm going to do then is I'm resting my hand like that onto the easel and I'm just putting in a white spot there a little bit of a white spot there a little bit of a white spot there on there you there you um, looking at my reference maybe a little bit there, a little bit there like that. Now, you've seen me do this a couple of times with different paintings when I say, put a bit of white on and then whatever color you put over that is going to be adopted by that color, but it's not going to be as dark because everything else is darker than that. So that's the lighter spot now you're painting. This is where your eye wants to be drawn to because it wants to be drawn down there and this is what we're trying to do now is bring your eye into the center of this painting and that's what we're doing is putting a little bit of white in there now this is where the clever bit starts so I'm going to dry that off with the hairdryer and we'll get on to the second stage yes but this is just the first stage so this is a painting on its own you can use this as it is it's fine and I've done other paintings like very similar to this but what I suggest you do now is take it to a different stage using the chart as you can see behind me with how transparency works semi opaques opaques and transparency this is where this is going to work now you can use a couple of different things you can use water or you can use a glazing medium in this case i'm just using plain old water with a little bit of my flow retarder mixing it or my medium mixing it that's all i'm going to use no glazing materials needed so let's have all that i'm going to dry it off first <laughs> okay Okay, we've done that now let's check make sure with the back of your hand now let this canvas if you're using a canvas or a canvas panel or any anything makes it when you use a hairdryer and it gets hot so you need to let it cool down otherwise your your acrylic paint is just going to go <whistles> soak in or dry up very quickly now you don't need to do that so just give it a second let's go onto the palette and let's have a look at what i'm going to be doing now so i'm just going to get a little bit of kitchen paper i'm just going to moisten that in my bowl and i'm just going to just wipe my palette like that because we finished with a black and white now I scagged it doesn't matter okay put that in the bin now let's use um, our where's it gone we got our, our shader making sure that's nice and clean so that's nice and clean now we're gonna get some sail on blue and water or your medium mix and you want to thin that down now looking at our chart 
we can see that sail on blue tends to be transparent, semi-transparent. So it's quite opaque when it's neat and it's semi-transparent when it's thinned. So these are the tests that we done the other week. If you remember, um, the link to this actually video will be below in the descriptions or I'll put it uh, there. If you press this here, this like button, it'll come down and there should be a link to this video. Uh, but if you can see the sail on blue, the test we did show that it's semi-transparent when thin, but with water or glazing medium. So that's a good chart to have. And that's why I wanted to do this particular um, video for you today. So back to our canvas and our palette. So just a thin glaze and then literally go all over. And this is where we're gonna discover this painting. In fact, let's put that brush down and let's get our big brush, making sure it's damp, that's it. And then a bit of water or medium mix improver and let's cover that entire canvas over with some blue. Now you need, there you go. You can bring it slightly more pigment to this side, like that. You can bring a bit more pigment down here, make it a little bit bluer. But leaving the center quite transparent. So it's got a tinge of blue to it, but not a lot of blue. Just bring a little bit of that blue over like that. The idea of this now is if we get our oval shader that we used earlier, just very lightly, very lightly go over that. I'm not touching it, just just the ears, just just breezing the surface, just caressing the surface. Just caressing that surface. That's a very nice light wash, which I'm gonna dry off quickly. Hey welcome, thanks for stopping by. It's time to learn with our friend Clive. So grab your brush, have a great time. And don't forget to click subscribe. Now again, back into that sail on blue. Touch a Prussian blue to it. Touch, touch a Prussian blue. Another little touch. Let's get a nice, let's just change this color completely. Now I'm not mixing black with it. I'm not playing around with tones. I'm darkening the blue by mixing another blue with it. So, and let's, let's get that in here because we want that nice and blue, a little bit more moisture. A little bit more moisture and just drag that across. If you're afraid it's going to dry quick like I am, I'm just moistening my brush, the shader, and I'm just going to brush that, brush that in very gently, merge that in very lightly like that. And we're already developing this nice dark area there. And I'm going to bring a bit more brush and blue now to that mix, darkening the edge of this side. I'm taking this down to a darker value. It's a little bit thicker. Prussian blue on our chart is quite opaque when it's neat and it's transparent when it's thinned. So we need that nice strong color coming through like that. And then get your brush and just blend that through. Bring a little bit of white to that, thin it down. Then blend that through. Again, a bit of kitchen roll. And I'm just lightly rubbing that away. 
nice transition effect. So already we've started to develop that moody scene that we got there. I'm just going to put my brushes straight back in my pot. Now I'm going to dry that again with a hairdryer. Hey, welcome, thanks for stopping by. It's time to learn with our friend Clive. So grab your brush, have a great time. And don't forget to click subscribe. Right, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to bring in a, um, a small detail brush. This is a number five detail brush. Um, and the reason I want to do that is because I want a nice sharp point. So I'm just going to get a bit of a bit of titanium white and getting that nice sharp point I'm leaning my hand on my bench again like I showed you earlier and I'm just now going to bring in just the smallest amount of white light here and there and I'm just gonna pull that across like that trying to try and lighten that area a little bit there okay we haven't finished with the um, we haven't finished with this yet now I'm gonna get my little shader um, now I'm gonna get some hookers green and I'm gonna thin that down a bit and this is where I said we can get color from black and white when well, we can because all we're doing is putting glazes on. Now, Tucker's green um, is, tends to be a little bit semi transparent or transparent if you're using it with a glazing medium. So let's just put a little bit of a green color in here and there just to as blue and green next to each other on the color wheel, so they tend to sit well together. just gives a little bit of color and it also now adding that color is going to give it a little bit more depth as you can see just a little touch of white to that and then just pick up here and there a little couple of little light spots as if there's a bit of light coming through it's a dark painting but we've got to bring a little bit of light a little bit of light coming through there to the canopy of the trees there it's just catching the ground there like that and it just gives you that more bit more depth to this painting what you could do if you wanted to, you could get a little bit of black and thin that down again. And we could strengthen these trees. Put a couple of lines in like this. And these will disappear. These will fade back. And we could put a couple of nice dark twiggly things that a couple of lines here and there and then here and we could get away when I put that bit of sponge I chucked it back in the mortar yes I did let's squeeze that out okay give a bit of black well, let's just put a couple of bits of foliage but there, like that. I'll 
too. What well, you could do then, you could actually get a touch of green to that. And just put a little bit of green just on there, just to make it look as if it's not all in shadow. Check that back in there. Get your angle flat. Blend the bottom of that out. Put a bit of that ground in there, that shadow. Blend that through like that. Just moisten your brush. And then blend that in. There's a couple of little shadow marks there, here and there. Blend your brush, um, moisten your brush, sorry, not blend your brush, moisten your brush, just blend them in like that. Bring that bit of green up again. Just put a little bit of green here and there, like as if it's grass. And all I'm doing is pushing up with that. We're actually painting now. A little bit of white again. There's a little bit of a bank now. We've developed a little bit of a grass verge look, see? Just follow that verge down like that. There you go. A little bit more white, just touch. Don't want too much, don't want too much, no. Just, just a little bit of... Just a little bit of light. There, yeah, like that. A nice misty forest if you wanted to you could um, just get some say on blue on it's very tip of your brush and just put a couple of bluebells in a little bit of raw color not going to see much of this but they're there they're there we all know they're there. The eyes will pick up, so your eyes are going to go automatically now straight down. It's a bit of a verge there, and it's going to go straight into that nice point. And get a little bit of white paint in this case. A little bit of white paint. Thin it up, your brush, thin your paint down to a nice inky consistency with a nice thin. And then any any particular we'll paint we'll we'll sign it in this uh, corner today. There you go. And there we are. One misty forest. Well, not good. Yes. So, using just a standard black and white painting, yes, we can, you, you can do a, a nice value painting like that and then put some glazes on there. Using what we've already learnt as far as um, the glaze, glazing techniques are concerned. We know transparent and semi-transparent and opaque. So using those skills that we've already learned in the um, My Palette video, which again is going to be in the iCard and it's going to be in the description below. Um, using the other skills that we've developed through um, the other lessons we've done. And then you can strengthen these trees a little bit darker if you wanted to. You can, you can make that one a little bit darker, whatever. You know, I'm just showing you a way. I'm showing you a method. I'm showing you how to use the lessons and put them into your own paintings which is important now wash your brushes really well and all remains me to say is thank you very much for joining me in the studio today and um, I'm glad that you've actually taken up my invitation to come in and watch this lesson with me and I'm very grateful for every single view and um, I would ask if you could do me one favor you know that I've got Patreon, which is a public funded site and um, if you want to pop along and support me there you can the other way you can support me is to watch the adverts on the beginning of each video and um, that goes for every single YouTube creator out there because that's the only way we get paid from Google is if people actually watch the adverts so don't press the skip button it's only five seconds and um, at the end of the day it, that helps us generate income and without the income we're not able to give these free resources to you and um, I want to continue doing this for many years to come 
The other way you can support me is to go onto my website, which is www.prize5art.co.uk. There you can purchase some products like my um, Mr. Bottles or my Flow Improvers. Um, because I'm not sponsored by any sponsor at the moment, so all the money that I need uh, to keep these videos going is coming out of my own resources and for kind support from patrons, etc. The, uh, the other thing is that you can, uh, there's, a, there's a private support button there as well if you want to do that. So I'm sorry I've got to say these things, but in order for me to continue and to improve this channel, um, it's important that I try to get some sort of um, sponsorship. And um, if, I'm, if I can be supported by my subscribers, that's great. If not, if anybody knows how I can get in contact with some um, s some people that would sponsor me, or if there's any sponsors out there watching, I would appreciate that you contact me by my email. And that all remains me to say thank you very much for taking the time to join me in the studio today. My name is Clive from clivesart.co.uk. Have a good day, a good week, a good month, a good year, because I don't know exactly when you're going to be watching this, as time is relative on YouTube. So without further ado, I'm going to stick this on the easel completion, run the rolling credits, and I will see you on the next lesson. So thank you very much. Bye. Hey, welcome. Thanks for stopping by. It's time to learn with our friend Clive. So grab your brush, have a great time. And don't forget to click subscribe. Visit Clive5R.co.uk